Hi everybody, welcome back to the third series, um, third video in this series on Vibe Architecting. First video, we introduced the framework, which is a way for you to get better results out of your Vibe Coding session. Part two, we introduce the steps that I do as preparation before I do my Vibe Coding session. And now in this video, we will focus on implementing one of these actual tasks that we came up with after step two. Let's look at an example. So I am integrating currently a YouTube manager. So I'm creating a software that allows me to manage my YouTube channel. The tedious parts like doing the description, doing the title, the, the hashtags automatically. I started coding, vibe coding a bit. I did the easy parts first because I wanted to show you what happens in one of the artist parts because I don't want to sugarcoat it. You will still get stuck in loops. This is why the prep work was so important of what we did before not just to give the AI context, but also for you to learn what you're doing. It doesn't mean you have to code everything to understand what's happening, but I'm trying to also put it into, into your workflow that you will get bad results if you don't educate yourself about the specific domain in which you're coding. So even if you are not directly reading every line of code, I want you to understand what is a database what is an API call. And step, if we go back to our plan here, one, two, and three, they are used in tandem to give the agents the information, but for you to also dig deep, question, and, and read about it. Because the deep research document, if you read it thoroughly, you will gain a great understanding. And this will give you the tools you need to correct the agent in a vibe coding session and not run into the loops. Um, an example, something I really like is called Notebook LM by Google. And Notebook LM, you can take your PDF of your deep research, your product research document, and push it to Notebook LM, and it will generate a podcast with AI where it will dumb down these things enough for you to understand, but still keep, keep talking with images in a way that you understand what's happening, but you don't have to be that technical. But let's get back to the actual problem. We now have enough information to give to our large language model to start coding. However, each ticket, I want you to refine in step four, each of these tickets with another deep research or Googling yourself or using perplexity. Oops, did a tiny typo here. As you see, this is a really simple channel, just straight information from me to you. So let's take, for example, I generated this ticket out of step um, of part two in the series. This part, it is where I want to have automatic transcription of my video. This will be useful for my YouTube channel manager to understand what the description is about, what the topic of the video is about. I will review this with tools like Perplexity. In this step, I would use Deep Research only when I'm refining the, the ticket. I'll use Deep Research only when it's really a technical topic that I don't understand enough to build my understanding again. But in this example, I want to be using OpenAI's Whisper model, which is an audio to text model. And after this, I want to save this as a text file to have the transcript of my video. So essentially, everything I say will be written in a text file. So a few things I want to, and by the way, I'm using this example. I cannot use all of the examples you guys are giving me, but I'm still picking a hard one to teach you about the process. Don't try to make this about a specific use case, but try to learn the technique, try to learn the mentality. So here, for example, in the description, I'm gonna to try to refine and get something a bit more precise. From our deep research document, we came up with, okay, we want to use Whisper, but this is vague. Use OpenAI Whisper or an alternative transcription to generate um, the audio from the video. Personally, I like an inference provider called Grok. So I do something like, uh, an inference, by the way, is the act of running a large language model and giving you the output. So for example, what I would do in perplexity, in Gemini, in deep research, I would say, is Grok good with whisper? Just a simple, you know, like I'm trying to refine. This is a process we do in teams of software engineers. We will have the product manager present what he wants to happen 
and then we're going to take the, the ticket and we'll tear it down line by line. We'll ask questions. Should we use OpenAI? Is it expensive? Is there something like an alternative that is more performant? So I will go ahead and try to understand this because it is the domain knowledge that will let me know if the feature really worked. This is the part you cannot skip. You cannot replace understanding a feature. If, even if you let AI do it, if you don't understand the end result, what you're expecting, you will not get good results. So this is what I'm doing here. I, okay, let's take back of this example, Whisper. But I want to use Grok. That's the one I know. I could research other ones, but I know Grok is pretty good. And from reading, you know, like, okay, is Grok good with Whisper? It says there's multi-language support. It's pretty efficient. All right. So what I would say here, I would go and refine this or an alternative. So I would say with Grok implementation. Let me just correct this small mistake here. To generate accurate transcription from video. Okay, we addressed a future. So future questions in step four, I want to go to the acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria, or another word people use would be DOD, definition of done, is a checklist, kind of um, a bucket list of items that you, you say, okay, this feature is done. You'll give this to the AI and you'll test it yourself to see if it worked. Something I don't like, here it's asking for multiple languages. That was a result of maybe me not giving enough information that I wanted to work only on an English YouTube channel. So it is fine. We, you know, I would ask the product person at work, do we start only with English? Because this is gonna make, if we put French, Spanish, the scope is gonna be bigger. You know what, first version, let's remove that, let's delete it. AQ system, you rarely post more than one channel at a time. So a Q system would be more than one video at a time, sorry. So I would research. Um, let, let's research. Okay, what is a Q system in a server that processes videos? Let's go ahead and research, right? You, you can educate yourself. Then that's the key. So a Q system, without going too much into details, is you process items one by one in a queue. First thing happens, take it out, work on it, push it to the next, work on the second item, rinse and repeat. So if you educate yourself and you realize, I'm just one YouTube channel, will I do more than two videos, three videos a week? Let's remove the queue system. Performance optimization and accuracy testing with a simple video, I don't think that's needed. I'll test it manually myself. I don't want the, and think about your AI model if you get too deep in asking too much out of it, it will get lost. So do that yourself, you know, like let it vibe code, but do your own checks. You know, checks and balances are important in systems. And we remove that. FFmpeg, I'm not gonna change that. FFmpeg is a great library to handle video files. But again, if you don't understand what is there, research. What is FFmpeg? Is it good with video and sound? And the answer is that it is. Honestly, it's a great library. It's a pretty standard one. But you should double check all of these steps because you are in charge. You are orchestrating the model to work. So whisper.cpp for local implementation. We decided we'd go with Grok. I'm removing that. GPU acceleration. This would be if I'm doing a local model. I don't have a GPU. I work on a laptop. Gone. And Queue management system for trust crunchup job? Why not? You know, who cares? And I will be adding another detail. Use Grok's API. All right. So this is essentially step four. Refine each ticket with deep research, perplexity, or Google. Step five is where I wanted to go and do a live editing session, but it, each session is so different that I cannot give you the repeatable you would spend a lot of time just watching me correct code and, and like chat with the model to, for it to, to fix. But essentially what I do, my own setup, I, I have cursor, but I use, I don't even use the AI features anymore because I fell in love with the Klein extension, which is available for VS Code. Let me walk you through Klein. Klein is this extension you can install. And essentially what Klein does 
that it has a plan mode. A plan mode will take your instructions. And let's look a bit at what I did. In here, I gave it the instructions. I copy pasted a ticket similar to the one we did, right? I said use Grok's hosted version, you know, use the Grok API. I even made a few mistakes, but what it will do, it will look at this, it will scan your code base and it will try to come up with a plan and it will ask you questions. So the agent, you see, I'm just going to close this one here. You see, it's trying to tell you, okay, I'm going to create the transcription module. It's explaining to you what it will do and you will have to answer a few questions about, do you want to use this? Do you want to use that library? Will you be providing the API key yourself? So you use the plan mode to find these flaws into your own implementation, into your own ticket, because you might not be able to think about everything and sometime in the code, things will change. And by the way, I, I will be making a video about my own AI coding setup of how I work with this. It changes around every two or three weeks. So don't get too down to the details. Focus instead on this, this five, um, step five, these, you know, these um, steps. Focus on them and don't focus on the actual, like, is GitHub agent better? Is V0 better? Find what works for you, rinse and repeat, but keep this framework in your head that you empower yourself to make something good. So the first thing is a plan mode or an architect mode. You give, you give your ticket, you plug in your code base with whatever tool you use, in my case, with Klein, and you ask it, work on an implementation. So there we have, you know, like we talked a little bit. I even went ahead and in that conversation, I found the Grok documentation and I pasted it. So you see, this is very much pair programming. This is what we say by vibe coding. Get into the flow, let the AI work, augment it when you need, but be prepared for what it will do. So it asked me a few questions. Is FFmpeg installed? This is to my use case, so don't, you know, like don't get lost in the, in the weeds here. But the, the idea is that you're using the knowledge you're building, you're giving that to your vibe coding session. And I said, yes, it's installed. And at this point, I forgot to get my API key. I went ahead, I, I looked how to get an API key and I put it into my files. So don't get too much into the details. When you're ready, you are going to switch to act mode. Act mode has the ability to edit files, run command line commands, and it will start coding. And I let it auto proof. So personally, I'm okay if it edits the files, if it reads, this is fine. However, using the browser, using you know, commands, some kind of like to review, but let's not get lost in there. Um, all right, let's put this down. So the end result was that honestly, the code was a bit terrible, which is quite common when I'm vibe coding. I had to correct a mistake of my past vibe coding session. The way I go about correcting these things is I will test them a lot manually and I'll give the common line output back to, let's go back into the conversation. I will give back the, you know, the common line. I will say, look, this is not working. Here's the common line output. Then the agent will say, okay, let me try something else. And this is how you end up vibe coding. You prepare yourself a lot. And let's get back into these steps here. Manual testing is important. Do not let it go wild and, okay, now do the database. Now do the UI, do the form go step by step and do a bit of manual testing. And after I would say around 10 minutes of back and forth, we edited a few things which are specific to my use case. Again, you can adapt to your own use case, but get into the mentality, into the mindset. I ended up with something that was working. Um, just, you know, I'll start my server. Um, let's actually go ahead and start the server here. So I will go ahead and start it. Um, and then my use case was if I want to drop a video in a specific folder, I want this video to have the audio extracted. The audio is extracted, is sent to a whisper API and I get the text. So let's just go ahead and let it start because it takes a few minutes um, or a few seconds to do. So now 
my agent, this is, by the way, the, um, the project that I started Vibe Architecting in step one and two of uh, this series. So essentially, here what is happening is that the video has started to get analyzed. And I'll cut, I'll get back to this. Actually, you know what, let, let's, let's let it run. So we're seeing here, it found a video, it found a video file. It's just a small video that I had laying around. And we can see it now, it created the job of processing the video. So now, under the radar, what I've just vibe coded, if we look at those files, this is all what I was vibe coding, and the code is terrible. There's mistakes, you can fix it after you have an ha a happy path, after you first get it working. So now, if I go back to my files, you see I have this video to upload, and it is transcribing as we speak the audio for that file. Now it's done. If I go ahead and open up that file, it is exactly, it was a whole V0 tutorial I uploaded a few months ago. And as you saw, all that I'm saying is that Yes, I had to use a lot of my dev skills to make this happen, still not perfect, but my preparation into making it happen made the difference. You should gain those skills gradually. You should work on smaller things like a, like, um, a notes application that saves things to a database. And you can teach yourself gradually by reading blogs, by understanding using deep research, notebook LM, all the tools we've discussed, you can teach yourself these steps. And the last step is just to commit the code to GitHub. GitHub, um, if you don't know what it is, please find it. It's a way to save code. And let me show you a bit how I save, I, how I organize these. For example, let me close the changes here. Let's make this a bit bigger. I do not go too far. I try to keep these, if you look here, I add like 900 lines, here 60, 76, 200. You try to find these at the point where it's working, you fix the code, you try to improve it, and don't go too deep in your vibe coding session. Now it's working. You have a fixed task, which was done. You worked on it 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, but you have something working. You rinse and repeat. You restart the prep. So before going into vibe coding, that's really all I wanted you to learn from this technique is use all the tools and, and be curious. Technology is magical in our age. We're in a golden age of accessibility into making your own software. So do not just think vibe coding will be magic, but realize that two years ago, you would have needed a bootcamp, a degree, or, or learning this by yourself for such a long time. All right, so I, there's not gonna be a part four. Instead, what I'll do, I'll show you how I choose my tools. Next video, we'll focus more maybe like on updates to what Firebase has launched. There's a lot of new uh, cool things, but ask me questions. What do you want to see? This channel is a direct communication between you and me. You know, like it's, there's no editor, there's no like, there's no sponsors, straight, straight up talking together. So all right, guys, uh, leave comments and likes, it helps. Um, and see you in the next one.